हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ईपीजी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर राजीव जैन फ्रॉम जीवाजी यूनिवर्सिटी ग्वालियर टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट ए मॉड्यूल ग्रीन हाउस इफेक्ट एसिड रेन बायोडाइवर्सिटी एंड इट्स कंजर्वेशन अंडर पेपर इन्वायरमेंटल बायोटेक्नोलॉजी मॉड्यूल लर्निंग ऑब्जेक्टिव आर वाट इज ग्रीन हाउस इफेक्ट how acid rain occurs how it affects us and we shall here also study by diversity and its conservation the term greenhouse effect it was first coined by fourier in 1827 it, it is also called as atmospheric effect global warming or carbon dioxide problem because initially it was considered that this global warming is due to the excess of carbon dioxide present in the atmosphere so it was also called as uh, carbon dioxide problem the earth is heated by sunlight and some of the heat that is absorbed by the earth is radiated back into space however some of the gases in the lower atmosphere acting like gases in a greenhouse allows the solar radiation in the uv visible and near ir rays while filtering the dangerous uv radiation to come in but do not allow the earth to re radiate the heat into space that is what i want to emphasize here that ozone layer present in the atmosphere is filtering the infrared rays but due to the excess present of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere they absorb carbon dioxide gas and due to that phenomenon carbon dioxide is not re radiated back to the uh, outer atmosphere and it result in the heating of the increasing the temperature of the earth however some of the gases in the lower atmosphere acting like gas like glass is a greenhouse allow the solar radiation to come in but do not allow the earth to re radiate to the heat into space that may be one of the reasons for increase in the temperature greenhouse effect is the process by which radiation from planets atmosphere warms the planet surface to a temperature above what it would be without its atmosphere the term acid rain was first used by robert angus smith in 1872 which means the presence of excessive acids in rain waters acid rain is in fact is a mixture of mainly sulfuric acid nitric acid and hydrochloric acid where the ratio of these acids may vary depending upon the sulfur nitrogen and chlorine emissions increasing acidity in natural waters and soil has become a problem all over the world rain tends to be naturally acidic with a ph of 5.6 due to the reaction of carbon dioxide with water to produce carbonic acid this small amount of acidity is sufficient to dissolve minerals in earth crust and make them available to plant and animals other atmospheric substances from volcanic eruptions forest fires and other natural phenomena also contribute to natural sources of acidity in rain another aspect that is biodiversity is the variation of life on earth and in myriad of processes it includes all life forms from the unicellular fungi protozoa and bacteria to complex multicellular organisms such as plants birds fishes and mammals 
in simple terms biodiversity means the large variety of flora and fauna on this planet earth now we shall study greenhouse effect in detail greenhouse effect means a building made of glass with heat and humidity regulated by plants atmosphere like glass absorbs some of the long wave radiation emitted by earth and radiates the energy back to the earth a greenhouse is that body which allows the short wave length incoming solar radiation to come in but does not allow the long wave length outgoing terrestrial infrared radiation to escape in a similar way the earth's atmosphere bottles up the energy of the sun and acts like a greenhouse where carbon dioxide act as glass window carbon dioxide and water vapors in the atmosphere transmit short wave length solar radiation but reflect the longer wave length heat radiation from warm surface of the earth carbon dioxide molecules are transparent to sunlight but not to the heat radiation so the trap and reinforce the solar heat stimulating an effect which is popularly known as greenhouse effect so what is greenhouse effect that when energy or heat is coming solar heat is coming to the earth in principle it should go back but due to the presence of greenhouse gases carbon dioxide various other greenhouse gases oxides of nitrogen the, it remains on the earth and it cannot go back and this effect is known as greenhouse effect it is defined as follows greenhouse effect is progressive warming up of the earth surface due to blanketing effect of mammals carbon dioxide in the atmosphere greenhouse effect is the phenomenon due to which the earth retains heat so overall what is greenhouse effect greenhouse effect is the phenomenon due to which earth retains the heat greenhouse effect means the excessive presence of carbon dioxide methane nitrous oxide chlorofluorocarbons etc blocked in the ir radiation from the earth surface to the atmosphere leading to an increase in temperature which in turn would make life difficult on earth so the greenhouse effect as you can see in this figure that greenhouse effect affects in a number of ways that it 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 may be due to the excess of carbon dioxide if there then it means it retains heat it retains heat and then excess of carbon dioxide may result in excess of photosynthesis and it may lead to algal bloom which is also known as eutrophication or number of phenomena may occur but here we are studying only the uh, effect of increase in temperature how the effect in increased temperature affect the uh, animal and humans life and overall life living beings on this uh, earth next thing is how the greenhouse effect is produced under normal concentrations of carbon dioxide the temperature of the earth surface is maintained by the energy balance of the sun rays that strikes the earth and the heat that is radiated back into the outer surface however when concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere increases the thick envelope of this gas prevents the heat from being re-radiated out the heated earth can re-radiate this absorbed energy as the radiation of longer wavelength the thick carbon dioxide layer 
acts like the glass panels of a greenhouse or the windows glass of a closed car, allowing the sun rays to filter through but prevent the heat to escape. The effect is to trap the sun's warmth. Thus, greenhouse effect is based on the principle of infrared absorption characteristics of gases. Higher the concentration of carbon dioxide, greater will be the absorption of thermal radiations. That is, more radiation is trapped and re-emitted back to Earth's surface, causing heat trap and increasing global temperature. So overall, if we say which is the most contributory to the greenhouse effect out of which, which gas is has maximum contribution to that. Relative contribution of greenhouse gases, the greenhouse gases, you may consider which is the most, uh, most, uh, if we consider the relative contribution of greenhouse gases, we will find that which is the most culprit. So we will find here that carbon dioxide is not only the culprit contributing to greenhouse effect, but methane, nitrous oxide, chlorofluorocarbons, and water vapors also contribute significantly to global warming. The relative contributions of radiatively active gases to temperature is as follows. Carbon, as you can see here, that carbon dioxide contributes to 50% to global warming, whereas methane, it contributes to 90%, uh, 90% chlorofluorocarbons, 70%, ozone, 8%, nitrous oxide, 4%, and water vapors to 2%. Sources and sinks of greenhouse gases. Main source of carbon dioxide are vehicular exhaust, furnaces of power plants, fossil fuel burning and breathing by animals. Carbon dioxide fertilization flux is an important parameter in balancing carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. However, there are uncertainties in the flux of carbon dioxide. An overview of the fluxes per year is as follows. Emissions by deforestation and changes in land use, emissions by use of fossil fuel, uptake in the oceans, uptake by carbon dioxide fertilization. Energy production is a major source of greenhouse gases. The ratio of energy produced and carbon dioxide released is in the order natural gas followed by petroleum followed by biomass, followed by coal. Biomass, however, offers the possibility of sequestering atmospheric carbon dioxide during its growth. The major sink of carbon dioxide is the ocean, which contains the bulk of dissolved carbon dioxide as bicarbonate. Another sink of carbon dioxide is the biomass, which living green plants in which the photosynthetic rate is known to accelerate with increase in carbon dioxide level. The balance shows a net increase of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere of 11 into 10 raised to power 9 tons per year. This can be reduced to 50% if the deforestation is prevented. It may be noted that the carbon dioxide content in the atmosphere is the result of exchange fluxes between very large reservoirs, that is the atmosphere, biosphere, and the oceans. Another greenhouse gas is methane. Methane, the most potent greenhouse gas, creates a canopy in the atmosphere, traps the solar radiation, and contributes to climatic changes. Main sources of methane are coal mines spread across the world, release 25 million tons of methane annually. This is the same amount that leaks from the world's oil and gas fields. It has the same global warming potential. Inefficient combustion of fossil fuels, 
wetlands, including natural swamps and paddy fields. Enteric fermentation in grazing animals release 30% to 40% methane. One ton of methane suddenly burst out of the ocean 55 million years ago. Fossil records show that warming of the deep oceans would heat the sediments enough to release trillions tons of methane. If this much gas is released, it can lead to global shift in carbon isotope. Sink for methane decomposition is oxidation via hydroxyl radicals in the troposphere. Oxidation depends on the availability of OH free radical. Small amounts of methane are lost when taken up by soils and by leakage into the stratosphere. Another greenhouse gas is nitrous oxide. Major source of nitrous oxide are soils, oceans, microbial denitrification, biomass burning, nitrogenous fertilizers, emission from industrial processes, automobiles, and urban waste landfill sites. And sink for nitrous oxide is stratosphere, where it is photochemically converted into nitric oxide, which is capable of depleting ozone gas. Earth's mechanism and global climate. Computer simulations on the world's climate indicate that Earth is a complex interdependent system in which oceans, atmosphere, and life affect one another. The recent discoveries about the Earth's mechanism for its stability and controlling the global climate are plant and animal life have saved the Earth from a fate similar to Venus run away from greenhouse effect. Photoplanktons act like little carbon tankers. Ocean plankton may play a crucial role in regulating global climate. Sudden shifts in ocean currents such as Gulf Stream can trigger smaller ice ages that last for centuries. Tiny fluctuations in the Earth's orbit augmented by changes in the proportions of atmospheric gases control the advance and retreat of glaciers. Acid rain is a rain or any other form of precipitation that is unusually acidic, meaning that it possesses elevated levels of hydrogen ions, means it has low pH. It is a popular term referring to the deposition of a mixture from wet, that is rain, snow, fog, cloud water and dew, and dry, that is acidifying particles and gas form the acidic components of the rain or precipitated water. Acidification of environment is a man-made phenomenon. The super stack and smelters of Sudbury, Ontario, released about 2,500 tons of sulfur dioxide into air daily. It is the largest stack in the world and serves as a symbol of acid rain problem in North America. Recent studies indicate that global atmosphere is on the receiving end of 20 billion tons of carbon dioxide, 130 million tons of sulfur dioxide, 97 million tons of hydrocarbons, 53 million tons of oxides of nitrogen, more than 3 million tons of cadmium, arsenic, lead, mercury, zinc and nickel and other toxic metals and a host of organics including polychlorinated biphenyls causing environmental hazards and acid rain. So, as you have, as you have studied here that acid rain is due to the low pH. When we call it rainwater as acidic, when its pH is low. Why pH is low? Why the pH of rainwater is low? In some cases, it may be due to the various pollutants. From where these pollutants are coming? Most of the these pollutants are coming from transportation, industrialization, factory, 
पावर स्टेशन स्मेल्टर्स वालकेनोज एंड बर्निंग ऑफ फॉसिल फ्यूज द एक्मुलेशन ऑफ द अब कंपाउंड वॉज फर्स्ट रिपोर्टेड विच इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर द इंक्रीजिंग एसिडिटी इन इन स्वीडिश लेक्स एंड रिवर्स एंड इट वॉज लेटर ऑन रिपोर्टेड दैट दीज सब्सटेंसेज दीज सार्ट वेन डिपॉजिटेड ऑन मार्बल स्टैचूज इन इटली दे कन्वर्ट द कैल्शियम कार्बोनेट बिकॉज द मार्बल इज मेड अप ऑफ कैल्शियम कार्बोनेट दे कन्वर्ट इट इन टू कैल्शियम सल्फेट एंड वेन रेन इज देयर देन द कैल्शियम सल्फेट इज लीस्ड आउट एंड द मार्बल फिगर्स आर डिसफिगर्ड so composition of rain rain water analysis of acid rain showed the following species present there present there were protons were present there uh, calcium ions sodium ions magnesium ions potassium ions nitrate ions and sulfate ions among these sodium cation and chloride are derived from the oceans elevated concentrations of sodium calcium and chloride ions in atmosphere aerosols originate from salts used to melt ice and snow and snow on highways during winter calcium and magnesium ions are incorporated into droplets from dust ammonium ion originates from biological processes and fertilizers etc various sulfur species are released into the atmosphere and rain include sulfur dioxide hydrogen sulfide uh, carbon disulfide methane and methyl sulfide etc so so these all substances which you have noted here means different types of oxides of sulfur uh, hydrogen sulfide different types of products which are coming gaseous products or in the form of aerosols different types of salts released from there they affect our uh, plants animals man and material in different way they also affect our different types of products that is leather they affect they affect uh, paper they is uh, sarus is different types of diseases they cause in plants so overall they have very adverse effect on the living being and plantation in the uh, in this uh, on the uh, living beast on earth the chemistry of dry and wet deposition of acid is a complicated process because of the involvement of various interactions in the atmosphere in the following steps i shall explain in a simplified model of acid rain formation and precipitation number 1 the atmosphere receives oxides of sulfur and nitrogen from natural and man made sources on the ground some of the oxides fall to the ground immediately or later as gases such as oxides of sulfur sox and oxides of nitrogen nox next is the sunlight stimulates formation of photo oxidants such as ozone in the following way oxides of nitrogen that is nitrogen dioxide here being a good absorber of uv energy breaks down into nitric oxide no and atomic oxygen o the latter by combining with the atmospheric molecular oxygen gives rise to ozone that is atomic oxygen plus molecular oxygen will combine and form ozone in the next step thus form ozone oxidizes sulfur dioxide and oxides of nitrogen to form sulfuric acid and nitric acids sulfuric acid cannot exist as a gas it exists only as a small particles or in solution which may be as dissolved in rain droplets in the clouds on snow or in fog thus dissolved in the atmospheric moisture 
these acids fall to the ground at the time of precipitation or rain. A point to remember here is the fact that along with the wet deposition of acid also comes ions, charged particles of sulfates, nitrates and ammonium produced by ammonia generated on earth from the liquid manure of animals and hydrogen ions of atmosphere. Ammonia reacts with protons or ammonia takes protons and forms ammonium. Thus the wet acid deposited is in fact a mixture of acids of sulfuric acid, nitric acid, oxides and ammonium and hydrogen. Effects of acid rain on human health. There is no strong resentment in public against acid rain because of the lack of awareness about it and this is because unlike other pollutants, acid rain cannot be felt, smelt, tasted or seen. Its effect can appear after a long time. Nevertheless, it does affect human healthy direction through the dry fallouts of the gases and indirectly through the wet acid rain. Surface water of lakes, streams, rivers and reservoirs is accepted as pure water by the environmentalist since its pH is 7. It is this layer of water that shows the first signs of acidification before it becomes apparent in soil, plant or forest. A fall in pH to 6 in this layer dramatically changes the chemical and biological conditions of the water and a further fall intensified, magnifies and diversifies the problem of both aquatic life and man. Acid rain has also widespread effect on plants. Lynches are very sensitive to acid rain because their nutrient uptake is dependent on certain pH and any shift in it will affect these plants. That is why lynches are hardly found in major cities like New York, Paris and London where concentrations of acid producing oxides of sulfur and nitrogen is high on account of industrialization and vehicular fumes. Acid rain also affects trees in two ways. First, through the foliage being directly exposed to acid rain, its dry fallout and fogs get adversely affected. And secondly, through the roots which absorb heavy metals such as manganese, iron, aluminium, cadmium, mercury, etc. present in soil. Acid rain also affects buildings and structures. Buildings made up of sandstone, limestone and marbles are the worst affected by acid rain. And incidentally, all ancient buildings of historical importance are made up of these materials since cement was unknown these days. Dry deposited sulfur dioxide reacts with calcium carbonate and forms calcium sulfate. Calcium sulfate is soluble and is washed out the surface of the stone when it rains next. How acid rain can be controlled? The phenomenon of acid rain is a highly interactive problem and remedial measures to control it are very expensive. The potential probability of acid rain is one of the major arguments against installation of coal-based thermal power plants. Keeping in view the potential ill effects of acid rain, it is desirable to control acid causing pollutants in rain at source rather than treating the adverse consequences of acid rain. The only practical approach to counter the problem of acid rain is to reduce production of oxides of sulfur and oxides of nitrogen. Some of the points to be considered are there should be energy conservation. Energy conservation resulting in reduced fuel consumption and hence lower emissions of sulfur dioxide gases, oxides of sulfur and oxides of nitrogen. Conservation via more efficient fuel use and through improved thermal insulation is also being applied. Other methods of conservation is substitutions for fossil fuels by other alternative energy forms. 
نیکسٹ ون از دی ڈی سلفرائزیشن اینڈ ڈی نائٹریفیکیشن آف فیوز ریڈکشن آف سلفر ڈائی آکسائڈ امیشنس کین بی اکمپلشڈ بائی ریمونگ دی سلفر کانٹینٹ بفور دی فیول از برنڈ ود دی ہیلپ آف ٹیکنیک سچ ایز کول کلیننگ کول گیسیفیکیشن اینڈ سلفرائزیشن آف لکوڈ فیوز نیکسٹ پارٹ وچ آئی شیل ڈسکس ہیئر ان دس لیکچر از بایو ڈائیورسٹی اینڈ اٹس کنزرویشن بایو ڈائیورسٹی از دی ویرائٹی آف لائف آن ارتھ اینڈ اٹس میریڈ آف پروسیسز اٹ انکلوڈس آل فارمس آف لائف فرام دی یونی سیلولر پنجائی پروٹو جوا اینڈ بیکٹیریا ٹو کمپلیکس ملٹی سیلولر آرگنز سچ ایز پلانٹس برڈس فشیز اینڈ میمبلس ان سمپل ٹرمس بایو ڈائیورسٹی مینس دی لارج ویرائٹی آف فلورا اینڈ فونا آن دس پلانٹ دی بریڈس آف دی کنسیپٹ ریفلیکٹس دی انٹر ریلیٹڈنیس آف جینس اسپیسیز اینڈ ایکو سسٹم بیکاز جینس آر دی کمپوننٹس آف اسپیسیز اینڈ اسپیسیز آر دی کمپوننٹس آف ایکو سسٹم دیئر فور آلٹرنگ دی میک اپ آف اینی لیول آف دس ہائی آر کی کین چینج دا ادرس اسپیسیز آر سینٹرل ٹو دی کنسیپٹ آف بایو ڈائیورسٹی سنس بایو ڈائیورسٹی کورس اے وائڈ رینج آف کنسیپٹ اینڈ کین بی ایگزامنڈ ایٹ ڈفرینٹ لیولس ڈفرینٹ لیولس دیئر فور اٹ ہیز ناؤ بیکم کسٹمری ٹو اسٹڈی دی کنسیپٹ آف بایو ڈائیورسٹی ایٹ تھری ہائی آرکل لیول اینڈ دیز لیولس آر جینیٹک ڈائیورسٹی اسپیسیز ڈائیورسٹی ایکو سسٹم ڈائیورسٹی ناؤ آئی شیل ڈسکس آل دیز تھری ان بریف جینیٹک ڈائیورسٹی ایٹ فائنل لیولس آف آرگنائزیشن بایو ڈائیورسٹی انکلوڈس دی جینیٹک ویریشن ود ان ایچ اسپیسیز ود ان ایچ گیون اسپیسیز دیئر کین بی سیورل ویرائٹیز اسٹرینس اور ریسز وچ سلائٹلی ڈفر فرام ایچ ادر ان ون اور مور کریکٹرسٹکس سچ ایز سائز شیپ ریزسٹینس اگین ڈیزیزیز پیسٹ انسیکٹس ایٹسیٹرا اینڈ ریسیلینس ٹو سروائیو انڈر ایڈورس انوائرمنٹل کنڈیشنس سچ اے ڈائیورسٹی ان دی جینیٹک میک اپ آف اے اسپیسیز از ٹرمڈ ایز دی جینیٹک ڈائیورسٹی دا اسپیسیز ہیونگ اے لارج نمبر آف ویرائٹیز اسٹرینس اور ریسز are considered as rich and more diverse in genetic organization. In population of sexually reproducing organisms by the recombination of genetic material during cell division preceding sexual reproduction, in terms of the number of different genes and the number of various possible combinations of gene sequence, the magnitude of global genetic diversity is beyond calculation. Therefore, the concept of global genetic diversity is essentially meaningless. However, some kinds of genetic diversity at the individual population or species level can be assessed. At the individual population or species level, genetic diversity occurs as variation in the nucleotide sequence of particular gene segments, chromosome number and structure, linkage between genes and so on. Next is the species diversity. By diversity at its most basic level includes the full range of species on earth from unicellular microorganisms such as viruses, bacteria, fungi and protists through the multicellular kingdom of plants and animals. The richness of a species in an ecosystem is called as species diversity. A species make up of one level of a complex taxonomical hierarchy which are similar are grouped together in genera, similar genera in families, families in orders and so on until the highest level of the kingdom. Five kingdoms are generally recognized at present animals, plants, fungi, protists, arid, prokaryotes, that is, bacteria. In terms of species diversity, it must be noted that merely counting the number of species is not enough to describe biological diversity. Diversity has to do with 
the relative chances of seeing species as much as it has to do with the actual number present. Next one is the ecosystem diversity. Both genes and species in a sense define themselves through replication or reproduction, but ecosystems have no such clear identity. Ecosystems represent parts of a highly variable natural continuum and perception of change within this continuum is highly scale dependent. Therefore, a global quantitative evolution of ecosystem diversity is not possible. Ecosystem diversity is generally assessed in terms of the global or continental distribution of broadly defined ecosystem types or in terms of the species diversity within ecosystem. Ecosystem assessed in terms of the diversity of species may include activation of richness in particular groups and evolution of their relative abundance. A system having the component species present in nearly equal abundance is considered as more diverse than one having extremes of high and low abundance. Importance of diversity. Various uses of biodiversity regarding direct and indirect values are number one is timber. Wood is one of the few commodities used and traded worldwide that is mainly harvested from wild sources. It is also one of the economically most important commodities in national and international trade. Wood export constitutes a significant part of the export earnings of many tropical developing countries. Next is food plants exemplify the most fundamental values of biodiversity as also the fishery, fish and other fishery products make up another class of commodities of great economic importance in international trade that are harvested mainly from wild sources. These resources are also of crucial importance to global food security. Originally, plants were consumed directly from the wild and gathering of wild produce continues throughout the world even today. Only a few thousands of the estimated 2,50,000 species of angiosperms have been treated as direct food sources. Others provide forage and browse for animals which in turn hunted or farmed by people. How conservation of biodiversity can be done? One of today's most pressing environmental issue is the conservation of biodiversity. Many factors are threatening the world's biological heritage. The challenge is for nations, government agencies, organizations and individuals to protect and enhance biodiversity while continuing to meet people's need for natural resources. The challenge exists from local to global scales. If not met, future generations will live in biologically improvised world and perhaps one that is less capable of producing desired resources as well. Conservation is defined as the management of human use of the biosphere so that it may yield the greatest sustainable benefit to present generation while maintaining its potential to meet the needs and aspirations of future generations. So students, let us summarize what we have learned in this module. In this module, we have learned about greenhouse effect, acid rain, biodiversity and its conservation, how to conserve uh, different types of species present on the earth. It also includes relative contribution of greenhouse gases, effect of acid rain and how it can be controlled and different types of conservation strategies of biodiversity because it is very important to conserve our different types of species present there. It may be different types of fauna and flora. Thank you.